Hi, I'm Nathan. I'm a travel expert at Flight Centre. Hi, my name's Charlotte. I am a Europe and UK expert and I'm with Flight Centre. Definitely start with a list of all the places you want to go to and the monuments you want to see. Uh, then it's very easy to just piece together and put on a map where you want to go so you can create an itinerary from A to B where you want to go. One thing when traveling, obviously you have to make sure you're up to date with all the COVID restrictions for the country, but you can't forget how important the visa information and restrictions are. Make sure your passport's valid six months coming back into Australia, as well as one thing I like is if you are traveling, maybe have a translation app. So if anything does go wrong, you can speak the language or read signs just by using your phone camera. When booking a trip, one of the first things I would do is uh, get the flights and insurance. So I would try always to get those two things together. Uh, book accommodation as soon as you can, especially in the places that you want to see most. Uh, so you'd hate to get to Paris and then not have anywhere to stay and not have the rest of the trip booked. Um, so definitely flights, insurance and as much accommodation as you can first. It's important to book insurance at the same time you book flights because the minute you book the flights with the insurance at the same time you're going to be covered throughout anything happening. So if you were to leave the office and the worst happens you're going to be covered from that very moment. There are heaps of different airlines to um, choose from. They're some of the best ones that will also offer like stopovers as well and we can get some really good deals. Uh, probably Emirates, Singapore, Cathay Pacific and Etihad are the, are the big ones. They have really good connections. They offer great places to stop if you want to and they have really great service on board. Some of the benefits of doing a stopover is that it breaks up the trip a lot. So especially if you have little kids or if you have mobility issues as well, it breaks up the trip. You're not sitting down for as long and it adds a bit of excitement to the trip as well, to the start. When planning a stopover trip, I would definitely do it on the way there. When, especially for me, when you want to go home, you just want to go home. You have no clean clothes left, you have no money left, and you just want to get back to your own bed. So I'd definitely do it on the way there. When talking about budget, it's a really difficult question to answer because it depends on the person. It depends on how luxurious you want the trip to be and where you're going as well, um, as to how expensive everything is gonna be. Going to Iceland is very different to going to Italy. So it depends on a lot of different factors. A tip for making the best out of your money before you go would definitely having everything pre-booked. So whether it be hotels to make sure you have the exact room, the exact place you want to be. Uh, museums as well. Some of them are free, which is amazing. Definitely do your research to see which are free, which you have to pay for. Uh, and even seeing some shows, you want to make sure the dates you're going, because it may be for two, three days or a week, you want to make sure the week you're going that you do have a seat in that uh, little amphitheatre so you can watch the amazing show. Best value for money when you're trying to plan a trip is probably the, the cheap, the smaller destinations. So if you're going to a little village, it's usually a bit uh, better priced. If you're going to a big city, it'll be a bit more touristy, so things will cost a bit more. Never fly long haul without a sleep mask, a neck pillow, as well as chewy lollies, just so when you do fly high, your ears always pop, so chewing lollies gets that jaw gone and pops them back.